Going to Solar Beach Colony? Uh, yes. Is that a view or what? Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> First off, Chad, I'm really excited to talk uh, to, 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 to the three of you, uh, Robert and Sylvia, again, um, the whole cast. I, I wish I could talk to everyone. I know we're all really busy and well, not everybody can be here, but I, I'm so excited to talk about this, uh, this awesome movie that, that, you know, The Deep Ones. I just, to me, it's a, it's a cult, you know, movie in the making. It has all the different ingredients uh that could that they could make it a, a cool movie uh, you know movie in the making so i want to talk to chat first because i know I, I got a lot to talk about and a lot to cover in 20 minutes i don't want to take too much time so chat you first sure the story the movie uh um uh you know how did this come in how did it came about did you was this the formula from the beginning you wanted wanted it to become you know a a a, a cult a cult classic well, I don't think, you know, it, it's all started with uh, Robert Miano, who introduced me to uh, Gina, who plays uh, the lead in the movie who gets raped by the sea monster. <laughs> so he introduced me to her and basically we had another project that we were trying to get off the ground and she said, hey, look, I've got this beach house while we're waiting for that other project to happen. Try to think of something like a slasher film or something that we could shoot in this little beach house I have. So I, my head started wrapping around it. And the minute I saw pictures of the house and the beach and the ocean, I immediately, immediately thought Lovecraft. And I kind of just wrote the script quickly around that. And, uh, you know, it, it all just kind of happened naturally, you know, kind of just came together with the ocean and Lovecraft and, a, you know, a cult and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, Robert and Sylvia in, in there as well. And they helped produce it. And, it was pretty quick from you know start to finish. It took like two weeks to write the script, and we cast it, and we all shot it down in Ventura, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I want to go back to chat again because this story is also based on uh, writings by Lovecraft, by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, how much did you? How much was something that was yours? Um, how much was something that you were inspired by it? Well, you know, I, my whole life I've been inspired by Lovecraft's work. I think he's just a genius and everything uh, has just such um, an impact. You're all, you'll remember it in the shower or for whatever story. But for this one, it was all about, you know, Shadow over Innsmouth and uh, Dagon and uh, Dunwich Horror, all these kind of little stories that I remember as a kid, I reread and really kind of saw them in a whole new light, especially when I tried to incorporate them in, in the film. And so we kind of try to take those elements of Lovecraft and those stories and c combine them with a sort of Rosemary's Baby attitude. And, you know, it just it came together really well. And it was so much uh, just so exciting working with Lovecraft's work because, you know, you're reading it. And you're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Let me just take this whole chunk of <laughs> Lovecraft dialogue and have Robert saying it or Kelly Maroney or whatever it is. And on set when they were saying those, you know, direct lines of his, it was just like, wow, what just amazing to hear those words. You know, Lovecraft's writing is just phenomenal. And to be able to pull any element of it together, is, especially within the story and the actors and everything and have it work is was really an exciting and pleasurable experience. I, so we got Kelly here. Kelly, thank you for joining us. I, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, um, and so I, I'm, I'm gonna switch back to the cast now because I, I got almost everybody here, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, what, did the three of you, where well, I open question for the three of you, were you guys, did you know what you were getting into <laughs> when, you know, when you got into the script and, and you, when you got the project, were you, were you completely aware of where the story was going? No, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump around Robert first. Robert. Oh, um, no, I mean, I, I, ha I really had no idea where we were going. And, and I was really looking forward to reading the script. And then Chad sent me the script and I said, wow, I said, that's, that's amazing. You know, and it opened up a whole new world for me because I really, I really wasn't aware of, of Lovecraft's work. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at the script and I read Lovecraft, I said, this is, this is great. I said, we, we got to do this. And, and then, you know, Kelly came on. And so it was, uh, 
yeah, it was uh, a love fest, you know, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> uh, Sylvia. Um, yeah, honestly, same with me. I didn't know who H.P. Lovecraft was. And so we started reading up on it and learning a lot how he's like the father of a lot of those horror movies that are mm -hmm. now, now, now. And it's really That's a fascinating true. person that I'm glad now, you know, with this movie, we can highlight more. And I know there is a whole fan base for it. So I just, I enjoy learning more about it. Very cool project. I had no idea what it was going into, but I'm glad I got into it. Kelly, yes. give me something. What, what? When I first read it, I thought, what an amazing part. I, I, I thought the script was, if you read the script before you start to hear it, when we actually said it, it read so poetically and it was so uh, vibrant. You could just see what was going on. And my first thought was we need $10 million. And my second thought was, I, this is like probably the greatest part I could imagine ever getting. Um, Cause I did know about Lovecraft. I've always wanted to do Lovecraft, but he only pretty much writes for men. So <laughs> I didn't have like, you know, it wasn't like a, I'm definitely going to get to do it. So I was thrilled and I just thought it was terrific. Um, my my role I just and then to you know, because I'm generally a guy he Lovecraft wrote me as a, as a dude so <laughs> that's actually even better I, I think that the two of you love jump into my second question and I, I'm going to ask it anyway maybe in a different way so you guys didn't know well Kelly didn't know about Lovecraft I'm a fan of Lovecraft yes you know I'm a huge fan of uh, his writing so that's why I'm excited about the story and everything that has to do with Lovecraft just just it's just different. I think it's unique what his perspective. So uh, in case of uh, Sylvia and, and Robert, you didn't know about Lovecraft. So did you learn something uh, doing research for the, for, the, for the parts? Did you learn something about his writing, about his, you know, his way of seeing this weird world? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we started watching some of the movies too. Just to like but just the, the aspect of, of Dagon goes back to biblical times. It's uh, it was worshipped uh, by uh, the Israelites and the Philistines. I mean, they went to war. I mean, it was in, it, it was their it was their god. Dagon was actually a god at one time. As, you know, so there's so much history about about that. You know, about Dagon and, and the and the writing. Uh, yeah, you know the uh, yeah. It's, that whole concept it, it's the mythology is so deep and 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 rich so yeah i i i learned a lot about history just reading uh you know lovecraft uh, sylvia you want to add something no i mean yeah we pretty much did the research together <laughs> or he would share with me like oh my god did you see this like and then we would read up on stuff and we got the books and yeah no it was definitely an eye-opener it's, it's, it, but that's what I'm saying. I think one of the one of the, I, I, just to you know make Kelly catch up. That's one of the things I was saying about the movie. I think it's a cult you know, movie in the making, just because it has the different pieces you know that works. They just make it a cult classic. So Kelly, just to rephrase the same question, but maybe in your case, you you knew about Lovecraft. Um, um, what what drew you uh, to you know to the, to to his writings and what what you found so interesting well it's because I'm, uh, I'm i'm so much part of the horror community it's almost like required reading i didn't know him when i was a kid um but a, as an adult when i became involved with the horror community it's pretty much you better know some lovecraft at least if not all of it so that's it and also one of my friends does a lot of lovecraft movies and so I had occasion to be around a lot of people who were Lovecraft, Lovecraft 24 seven. And I sort of absorbed it from there. I always wanted to do one, but like I said, you know, and play who. <laughs> so I really liked that. Never occurred to me it was Zadok, never, ever, but yeah. Um, but I want to jump just, yeah, yeah, Robert. just follow up on Sylvia. What she said was that um, Lovecraft inspired all these all these great, you know, uh, movies uh, mm -hmm. about that that mythology. So we knew about it consciously, I guess. <laughs> you know, you got guys like Carpenter and, you know, some really uh, he he kind of led the way. 
you know, and, and he died. I think he died without a penny in his pocket. It was like he he just gave it away. I mean, it wasn't even about money for him. Uh, it, it just been an amazing wealth of of, uh, of, uh, of literature and mythology. Yeah. yeah. I want to jump back we, to yeah. <laughs> I want to jump back to chat again and and again and this uh, this movie screams in the you know from beginning to end, but in a good way. And and I want to go go back to you, chat because. You know, budget aside, I know that's something we always mention when it comes to Indian movies. But yeah. what's what's there's something particularly budget aside? I don't want I don't I don't want to mention budget. I know we all know budgets are, are an issue, but budget aside, was there something that you found really difficult? You know, in order to the whole to the whole process because the story again, the story and the movies really were, were written. Everything makes sense. Everything's everything's in, in essence chronological, chronological order so you you understand how, where everything's going and, and where the story is going and and in some way you can you can see the end the the end coming but you're going to expect something else so was there something difficult during the process to use to make all the different pieces make sense well i mean the interesting thing you know after making so many low budget films i've kind of learned to kind of keep that in mind when I write a script. So it, I'm not writing car explosions. I'm not writing, you know, a 20 foot Dagon. It, it's, it's all kind of working in what we have and figuring that out. And so the idea, it started with that house and kind of working everything, central location. I mean, we're shooting the thing in 10 days. So it's basically kind of figuring out before I even really put it down on paper, what we have to work with and how the money that we have to make that can be stretched further and make it look bigger with the locations, the cast and the effects that we have and the money that we have to do that. So I don't kind of write myself into a hole. I kind of think, okay, we got say $100,000. How can we make that work? Well, we need to spend this amount of time in this house, not moving around, you know, just kind of figuring it out to spend what money we do have the best way possible and make it look as big as possible for what we've got. So I kind of just, have keep that attitude when I work on scripts that I know that I'm going to be directing and I know how much money that roughly we have to do it with and kind of just keeping that in mind and also going with the flow. It's like this actor didn't show up today. So, well, okay, we're going to use that person or I'll call up whoever and, you know, just being flexible and not being, you know, a tyrant on set where it's like, oh, you didn't say that correctly. 110 takes of, you know, whatever. It's just kind of going with the flow of what you have and the performance you're getting and working that to a degree that's not only fits your budget, but is also a lot of fun and the atmosphere mm -hmm. is creative and it's enjoyable. And if the actors have an idea or the DP has an idea, we, we go with that because, you know, we, on average, we're doing, you know, 10 to 15 pages a day. And it's just being kind of in that whole attitude of, let's, hey, let's get this done. Let's have fun. And if we want to improvise or come up with something that works better than what's on the page, then let's do it. You know, and that's kind of the attitude I try to keep on every set that I that I do. I I'm gonna jump into attitude pretty pretty soon, but I'm gonna I wanna that's gonna be an open question. I'm gonna go back to chat and 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 I'm, I'm and I'm gonna ask you: Did the did the crew with the characters did they have some input? for you as a director, hey, I wish I could do this. Can you let me do that? Can I, can I, maybe can I tweak this in the script and instead of doing this, did that happen? Because I felt the direction was really good, but the chemistry was next level. That's why I wish I could talk to the, to the whole cast because to me, I cannot single out somebody that just stood out. Everybody did just a notching job on their characters that I don't typically, when I do my reviews, I, I felt this, the actor did better than the other one, but there's, that's not something that there's no way for me to do that in this movie because I just felt everyone did a awesome job. So did the guys, you know, gave you some input? Hey, you know, Chad, can I do this? Can I do that? How did that? How did the chemistry came about in set? Yeah, well, I, speaking of that, that's a good point. Is like Gina's character, she recommended Johan because she was friends with him, and she also recommended um, Debbie. Uh, that character. So people that she knew and she was comfortable with, and that kind of gave, you know, where you see two people and you're like, oh, those, those could be friends or they could be married. It, they're, you know, it's not like oil and water. It's like they have a chemistry on set. And that 
worked for that and it's being as a director flexible with that instead of saying no i we've got to have this person or whatever mm -hmm. it's being totally open to that and then you know we'll we'll do a camera a rehearsal for camera and the actors might come up with something new or whatever it might be in the dialogue and it's like okay that works great let's try that or whatever it's being open to whatever works and being flexible instead of you know being uh, tied to your own ideas i guess where it and on a billion dollar budget that might work that might be like no it's got to be this hitchcock way it's everything storyboard everything's worked out it's got to be precise and i love hitchcock and i love those things but i do not have that personality to do that so i've kind of embraced the idea of just kind of going with the flow and that's not to say if you know an actor has a stupid idea or <laughs> the dp is you know, a shitty DP and that's noticeable on the first day, then they'll be fired immediately. But I like to go in with the idea of, let's say, look, we've hired the best people possible for this. Mm -hmm. They're excited about it. I'm willing to listen to them, let them show me what they've got. If they're like, uh, if they if they start telling me before we get to the set, I get a little annoyed with it. It's like, you know what, when we get there, show me. Don't tell me beforehand. I don't want to hear it because my mind's not there until we get on the set that day and run through it because to me it's like you're just spinning wheels you know it's fine to have script suggestions like i'll send a script to robert or kelly or sylvia and they'll say hey change this and change that or they'll do whatever and that's fine but once it's kind of locked and we're on set i'd rather have an actor show it to me what they want to do different than explain it to me beforehand because it's you know it's better to see it through the camera what it's going to look like and what it's going to sound like there and the energy that the location brings that the actors in wardrobe bring i mean uh jack nicholson had one of the greatest suggestions to um harry dean stanton on the set of ride the whirlwind which was the you know a western directed by monty hall which is fantastic no budget western it's really phenomenal and uh harry dean stanton was having trouble kind of really getting into character and and uh Jack Nicholson said, Harry, just let the wardrobe do the acting. So the idea that, you know, and that clicked for Harry Dean Stanton, and he used that his entire life as an actor of that philosophy of let the wardrobe do the acting. And, you know, things like that. And if you can find um, a resonance of things like that, whether it be a Lovecraft line or a Jack Nicholson, you know, little piece of advice on a set of a movie, you know, 60 odd years ago, then take it and go with it. So, you know, I think that's kind of, the, if you can find that kind of crew and that kind of cast for an indie movie and you're all kind of on the same page, you're gonna have a great time. And the movie, you know, might just become a cult classic, like you said, you know, knock on wood, but you know, you hope for that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, and now open question for, for everyone, just including chat, um, and talking about fun, and I tend to ask, this question when we talk about horror movies or, or you know, just weird movies in, in a sense or cult movies in a sense. Um, how fun was it the on set? Because obviously we're, we're trying to be serious for the characters and the story, but I, I, I know for a fact because I've been there in set for, for horror movies, that is just a blast in the back and we're just having trouble getting people to Jay, shut up, we're filming here, or calm down, or be serious. So how fun was working on set? Or maybe tell us something you know unique and interesting that happened that may come to mind. So I gotta go, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the with the Scaramoe queen her, herself here, Kelly first. Uh, Kelly. Um, I had a great time. I I can't speak for anybody else, but it wasn't uh frenetic or anything like that. It was super mellow and kind of, um, um, what's the word for it? Everybody was just like of, of one mind. It was very serene. And for example, I would get to set and, and I'd go out in the, on the beach deck and Robert and, and Sylvia would be asleep out there. And then they'd <laughs> get up and the food would come and everybody would sort of help each other get their food. and. Um, so I, I didn't, I wasn't present for anything that got really raucous at all, but mm -hmm. it was just such a nice feeling of everybody being together with no friction whatsoever, which not what, which you, I, you never see that. There's always one jerk, you know, so I didn't notice that there was any jerk on this one. And that's saying something. True, true. I like, I like the response, but that's true. Sylvia, that you jump in. 
Um, well, one of the things we did, which um, was kind of fun, we part of the cast stayed in an Airbnb close by. So we got to hang out on set and then we got to hang out off the set. And you definitely got to know each other pretty quickly and we became pretty tight actually very quickly too, which can be good and bad. So some nights I actually went home to sleep and let the guys, because they were all guys, just be guys. And then most of the time I was there, but uh, yeah, that was definitely a fun, <laughs> fun experience as well. Just to, to hang out and become a family, kind of like in a theater group, which was fun. Um, and then I didn't course, have, I didn't have that because I was only there. What was I there two days? Yeah. So I just drove back and forth. <laughs> so I wasn't part of that. It sounds like it was intense. <laughs> I remember Robert. the one night you stuck my home. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you yeah. want to add something? I'll say that. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. We have one little bit of a drama and it, it turns around plastic flowers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I heard about this. I was not there. <laughs> that is plastic. awesome. That is awesome. Robert, do you want to add something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, the location was just amazing, yeah. Rafael. I mean, here we were right in a house right in front of the Pacific Ocean. It was just, it was just delightful to get up and, you know, go to the set every day. I, I couldn't wait to go to work. You know, oh my God, here we are. We're going to, we're going to play uh, on this set. You know, it was just amazing. And then to follow up with what Chad said, you know, he, he really gives the, the actors a, a, a chance to explore, you know, without giving them any kind of results. So mm -hmm. it's, it, the creative atmosphere is, is heightened and we're able to, you know, come up with, use our imagination and come up with things that, you know, we, we never even thought about. And that was, that was really the fun, you know, to be, it's a create, it was a creative set and, you know, and, and, you know, Chad gives us the, the space to, uh, you know, to do that, you know, so yeah, it was fun, a lot of fun. Chad, Chad seems like an awesome guy. I, I wish, I, if, you, if you're gonna make another movie, Call me again. You can kill me. I don't mind getting killed. Oh, we're ready. That's, we're I ready think that's fun. In Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. We're uh, ready to go. And Puerto Rico would be a great location to shoot. Uh, in. I, I was going to give you my, my last question. Well, don't wait to my last question. So, I, I, one, more, one more question before we close before, before everything up. Um, and I think, Chad, would you, you want to add anything, anything to anything interesting that happened on set while, uh, while filming? Um... I guess the most interesting thing for me is um, it's a, basically the location was about 70 miles one way from my house. Well, I drove that every day, twice a day, home and back, because I just didn't want, I wanted to disconnect and a decompress mm -hmm. at my own house and, and not be too close to uh, uh, a party kind of, you know, if that makes sense. More of just, you know, I, I've done my job, I'm going home. I'll come up with other ideas for tomorrow and just be a, dis a disconnect from the project so that way. And a couple of times, you know, I fell asleep at the wheel and almost died in a car accident. But hey, you know, those, those are things that keep you on your toes and make you realize, you know, life is pretty precious. <laughs> Here it is four in the morning and I'm doing 120 miles per hour on the freeway. And then you wake up and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, so that was for me about the hardest part of the whole thing was the, um, because you're basically taking an extra two hours or more each day just to drive to the set. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you. I didn't know you fell asleep at the wheel. Oh yeah, or even more than once. That's scary. <laughs> the third wow. time was in the charm. Jeez. I got pulled over. Yeah, and I got pulled over, and they actually the police officer let me off with a warning, so that was nice. Oh, so that escalated quickly. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I know what a commute is, and I typically do two hour commutes down here when I have to go to the west side of the island. Um, uh, it's almost two hour, uh, almost two hour commute. Um, one, other, one open question, and I'm, I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to throw a curve to Chad. Hopefully, he'll, he will say yes. I want him to say yes, obviously. So, one open question to everyone, including Chad. Um, what, how, what do you expect, you know, people to to react to the movie? I want to go with Kelly first. Um. So far, I think people like the movie a lot. It's different, you know. I think they appreciate that there's a there's some unexpected. Uh, you know what? When I saw it too, I didn't 
because I wasn't around for shooting it, I guess. I was surprised and pleased that there was so much so much uh, humor in it. Mm-hmm. You know, because you do need that kind of a relief. I wouldn't be surprised if this didn't become a cult classic. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Completely agree. Sylvia. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would be freaking amazing if that became a cult classic. I'm all for it. Like, if we're going to vote, I'm definitely for it. <laughs> I'd love to see to, to do the sequel of it, too, as well. I think there's potential for that in Port, uh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Robert, do you want to add something? Well, I think somewhere, somehow, it is a cult classic. So, uh, you know, I'll go with that. And just to say, you know, you know the, the, the reason we do these things is to entertain people, mm-hmm. you, know, you know? And I think the film is, it, it does that, you know, it, uh, as you, know, you watched it and, and, and enjoyed the film. And I think that's, that's what we do. Before your chat answer, I think it has all the evidence to be a cold classic. It doesn't matter what in the end happens. It's just, it has all the different pieces I think Chad did a sort of amazing job to put it together to a big, it has all the different pieces for it to become a, a club classic, it doesn't matter. Uh, but so Chad, um, how, what do you expect people to react to it? Well, I, I hope their reaction is like yours, but <laughs> in yeah. reality, you know, always my films are kind of love it or hate it. So it's so refreshing when you find someone who honestly, like yourself, genuinely likes it and whatever, but I, I don't let the negative reviews or negative things get to me because when I first finished the rough cut and I'm like wow I love this and there's an energy to it you know like you need some chopping or whatever and then when you get it down and Richard Band does this score for it and you see it for the first you're kind of seeing it in levels for the first time and your excitement is up and up and up mm-hmm. and then when it gets into a festival like Sitges or you know whatever and you're like wow it got in holy crap and some reviews come out and they're great, they're glowing, and then you get some negative ones. So it kind of brings you down to earth, but you shouldn't let the accomplishment of the first time you saw it, the energy you had, or the first great review, or all these things bring down your enthusiasm for mm-hmm. a while, if that makes sense. Because sometimes, you know, you'll do something and it'll, you know, I did a film called The Ghouls and it got a great write up in a variety. I mean, I had Miramax calling me to want to do the remake rights. I mean, this, this was something at the time where I'm like, this is going to continue forever. And it, it doesn't. Each film is different. Sometimes they click, sometimes they don't. But, you know, luckily, for the most part, I just try to kind of look at it as I had a great time making it. That first cut I did, I loved. And, you know, just keep that enthusiasm for something and don't let, whether it be a negative reaction from a critic or a a viewer or um, a distributor or a rejection from a festival take away from all the hurdles that it made or any film makes to get to mm-hmm. the point where we're at right now of someone who's you know interested in doing a, an interview with the four of us I mean that's right there you've accomplished something that you know a huge amount of films that are made for you know a hundred grand don't get that thing they're sitting in someone's fucking uh, closet right now <laughs> never distributed never talked about never did anything so I, I take things with kind of a, a grain of salt as it were to say and I'm really proud of the film I'm proud of where it's at right now it's got distribution it's going to be released in drive-ins and theaters I mean that's says something right there and I, mm-hmm. I hope the, the mm-hmm. large swath of the audience enjoys it and likes it and is vocal about it but I know that there's going to be people who hate it <laughs> And, 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 and in a way, that's kind of a, a neat thing, because especially when a, a negative review is written well, I can enjoy that almost as much <laughs> as I can a well-written positive or poorly written positive review, per se. But uh, uh, it's, it's fun either way. It's that whole thing of, you know, you do a Google search. OK, what review came out today? Or where is it? Fine? And you get just that little bit of excitement of kind of seeing or reading someone else's um, how they see it for the first time. Mm-hmm. I've seen it so many times that it's, it's hard to even uh, look at it in a whole different light. But when you see someone, whether it be a negative review or a positive review or, or someone who compares it to um, Ed Wood meets uh, Roger Corman crossed with, you know, whatever, you're kind of like, you know, that's kind of neat because people shit on it. 
and Ed Wood all they want, but he made his films and he made you know, plenty of them. And it looks like a lot of them, they had a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, the way I try to make films is that as long as you're, you know, you write stuff that you're kind of excited by as a filmmaker and then the actors get excited by it and then you make it and you're still excited about it at the end of the day, then that's all that really matters. One final question. I, I know Sylvia just said it and I, 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 I don't want to spoil the end obviously, but I want to see more. And will, will we have a sequel? Will it we'll be a part two or deep, the deep two? Maybe in the making, do, are you already working on it? Is it going to be at deep, the deep three, at the deep four, or maybe deep 11? I don't, Ocean's eight in here, we can work something out. I would love, I would love to see more from you on a C chat. Like, do, do, is it working? You, what, you want to do it? No, yeah, the script is done. It's called HP Lovecraft's The Old Ones, and it kind of goes more on the um, other different uh, Lovecraft mythologies. It goes away from the ocean and it kind of, you know, just, goes all into the old ones and the whole cosmic thing to it. And it's really, uh, this, I love the script. It was one of those things where we kind of had, the idea of financing was there and then the financing went away and now it's kind of in a limbo of the possible, it kind of hinges now on the, how well the Deep Ones does. So if the Deep Ones does well, the distributor is offered to basically kind of pony up the dough to uh, make it. But the script's ready, it's uh, interesting and everybody comes back and you know well <laughs> robert comes back and kelly comes back and sylvia will be there oh, getting ready to do a new one <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited and i want to i want everyone to come back and i want i just i just can't wait to see the the, the first one they come out i just want to i want to see the second one already so <laughs> uh, again um uh, hopefully you can you know there's a budget so you can come to all of you can come to Puerto Rico and film something here and again no, uh, the whole thing seriously could be made in Puerto Rico if you, I'd love to we could do that uh, well that would be awesome and then Chad can write apart from me and just kill me out in five yeah. seconds I don't, I don't mind that's just that's I don't mind about that that's that's okay again I'm excited I mean I don't mean critical obviously like I said this movie screams indie but at the same time what shines is the story and the script and I think Chad I want to congratulate you on you a great a great story and you know wrote a great story and a great script so that part works and again I completely agree with you this obviously this movie it's not for everyone but it's a niche that in my book it's really big because the love crack the love craft uh you know audience or the, the the fandom is really big so you know that's I think it's going to reset them with them and it's going to, they're going to love them and they're going to basically do what the whole, what they, what the deep thoughts were like there, they're, they're going to do it for you. They're going to be the chat first, uh, you know, the chat, uh, Lovecraft first uh, come to life. And I want to congratulate everyone. Everyone did a great job. I, I, again, once again, there's no way for me to single out one specific actor that did better than that one. I think everyone played a huge part on making the story work. And I think that also goes back to Chad and uh, congratulations to everyone on the uh, really amazing job and, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You're lovely. It was nice meeting you. Thank you for having us.